right, y'all. Came on today to have y'all tap in today. About to go in here and do a radio interview real quick. My first time. So I want y'all to tap in with me, you know. Oh, we go do our thing. Let's get it. Oh, scared me. Hey. I'm like, yeah. Okay, you on the camera too. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Hey, hello. How you doing? Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Joy CJ. Robin E here in the building. Yes, y'all. And hold on, because y'all know we love to keep it juicy on the juice oh, now. Man, Can we get a man. round of applause for that, man? <laughs> we, we need some round of applause going on in the background, uh, producer. Where you at over there? Look, we got our boy Kenny Smith in the building. Yes. For sure, for sure, for sure. How for are sure, you, Kenny? Doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. It's so good to have you. I mean, first off, let me just give a little rundown. You're a mentor that you help people create five to six figures. You also have a celebrity credit expert and a trucking company. I mean, you just do it all. Your hands are in everything. So, woo, let right. us know where you want to start because it's a lot. <laughs> <That's> a lot. <laughs> uh, to be honest, um, I do know that we all know that we all need seven different streams of income to be rich. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my goals, you know. Uh, I've been working towards that. Uh, for the last couple of years, but uh, I got into this stuff probably like I want to say two years ago, something like that. I've been in, in all this like two years ago, so all these businesses started within the last year and a half, two years. Um, so, what was the first one that you started? The first thing I invested in to start uh, was uh, ATM or vending machine. Let me see, um, it was an ATM machine. Uh, okay, when I started re researching just what to invest in, what should I do with my money. I, I ran into that on YouTube, and then uh, so I watched that for like two weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I, I I was just thinking like, this is not that hard, you know what I mean? I was wondering like, we always use these ATM machines, but who get the money on the back end? So I went on YouTube. I went on YouTube, and I, I figured out like, all it really takes is you to go purchase an ATM machine, do your footwork, go find your location, and just do it, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I actually did. I bought me an ATM machine, did it. Uh, I got a lot of a lot of I got a lot of good feedback too, like. Um, People was like very intrigued on the part that I was owning an ATM machine. So when you first got your ATM machine, like what helped you decide? Okay, what am I gonna have in this ATM machine? <laughs> How did you think of that? Uh, I don't know to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> I think I just I just literally was on YouTube, just like searching little words. I don't even know exactly what word it was, but just searching little stuff. I think it just came up, and I'm clicking on it, and it, it got interesting. Once I started clicking on it and learning, I'm like, damn. So in your ATM machine, do you have what chips? What you have? What you selling? You what you got in there? A ATM machine is money, girl. Look, why did I just say something? Like, <laughs> you thinking about a vending machine? <laughs> yep, yep. We know what you meant, though. We knew what yeah. you meant when you said what I got machine. both, though. I got both, though. So, you know, That's I, probably, yeah. I do snacks in my vending machines, though. Uh, I don't do it as much now. It's because all the other stuff I got going on, that's like a couple steps ahead of that. So I don't really pursuing it that much, uh, you know, because I got some bigger things going on. Okay, mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Are you big right. on mentorship though? That's something that's very personal to you. Uh, yeah, it is because that's what changed my uh, life in the aspect of me having to learn a certain information for me to be able to now get to where I am. I don't think if I would have took the mentorship course that I took from my friend of mine to help me and mentor me, in the, I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in. Wow. Yeah. So when you first started off mentoring, you had a mentor. Yeah, no. Nah, when I first, when I before I started, I was getting mentored. You mm -hmm. know, so I was learning, 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 learning. Then when I came in a position where I was succeeding and I was seeing a lot of good results, and then I had it understood like the back of my hand, and then people started being asking me so many questions. I, I kind of turned into it. It was like, oh, how you do that? How you do that? Then it's like, all right, I can't. As it, is there so many people? I can't teach everyone one on one. You know what I'm saying? It has to be a thing now because. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, it's too many of y'all trying to get the information. And, and mentoring is just so important. Like, what would you, you know, we have a lot of stubborn people out here and they feel like, look, yes. I don't want to sit here and listen to someone try to teach me how to make right. money. Facts. So what do you say to those people? Uh, I say that they need to try to change their mind on it because whatever situation they're in, uh, if you haven't became a person who can make six figures or seven figures, it's something you don't know or it's something you're not doing where you need to be doing or you need to be knowing to get to that point and something you're doing is probably not that so you probably need to tap into some information you don't know so you could be able to get to that point mm -hmm. absolutely yeah dropping gems facts. i like that facts <laughs> now look you said six to seven so because i did hear ten would you say ten would be having ten streams of income is that too many uh you know i'm not going to tell nobody no that don't have ten streams of income but 
you want to definitely make sure you either like focus on one, master it, get it down packed, learn it inside out, mm -hmm. and then put it on autopilot before you start getting into this next business module that you want to get in. Make sure that that one is up and running, making you money without you having to be in the business, you know what I'm saying? And you can focus on, now you can focus on another stream of income. As long as you can set it up like that, hey, you do as many streams of income as you want. There's a lot of systems and automation systems out here that can run your business for you and have you not being working in it so that you can be able to set up other streams of income. You do credit repair too as well? Yeah, I do credit repair. I got credit repair business, which is also on autopilot. Um, I don't actually do the work myself anymore. Uh, I learned some systems and automation plays in place where I don't have to do the business. Actually, it runs on itself and I still get paid from it. Okay. Yeah. Now, so. we talked about your ATMs. Now, let's talk about your vending machines, okay? <laughs> These mm -hmm. vending machines. So, how, how many exactly do you have in the locations do you have them at? Uh, I only had three. Uh, until I start getting into other business modules that I, I'm in now. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really keep pursuing and growing, growing, growing in that field, mm -hmm. to be honest. Uh, it was just my starting point. I feel like that's a good starting point, point for people mm -hmm. because it's a small investment and it's not so much as you're going to lose so much money if something bad happens. And people be scared to jump out here and take that leap of faith. So that's something small that I would suggest somebody to start with. But the place I'm at now, I'm, I'm trying to. I got some big investments going on. So. And what would you say to someone that's maybe afraid to step out and, and take that leap of faith? Um, we all heard no risk, no reward. That's true. Um, you can't be scared. It's like you can't. Uh, you holding yourself back from being able to, you know, prosper to maybe grow into some in six figures and seven figures. If you don't get out here, you ain't going to be able to reach that point. It's like you're scared. You're holding yourself back. How are you going to reach the next level in your life? You're scared. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Words to live by, I like that. You have to. Right. Now you're doing so much. The next five years from now, where do you say? Where are you taking all this? Where do you see yourself? Uh, next five years, uh, I think I'm gonna have like a an academy, like a school, like um, like a financial literary type of school. It, even if it's online, or if I can maybe get to it being a location, I don't know uh, how to pursue it just yet. But uh, I feel like my brand is growing and like uh, me teaching people is growing and a lot of people are starting to tune in to me teaching and getting taught by me. So uh, I feel like if they keep growing like that, I would like to start some type of a, like financial literacy class or school academy type of thing uh, and being rich. Okay, <laughs> and I'm right with that. And that's what we need. I definitely feel like in school, they don't really teach us too much about, you know, filing taxes and uh, and credit. And I definitely don't remember how to fix my credit in school. No, definitely not. That's the most worst thing about school that there is, that they don't teach credit. And it's the foundation of everybody's life, which is crazy. So that's why I got so invested in the credit, though, because uh, I figured if this is the foundation of our life and what we need to use to get our cars, houses, phones and credit cards, stuff like that. I need to master that first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I can master that, I should be able to do pretty good in life. Okay. Now, speaking, <laughs> speaking of things you master, let's just also talk about how you're like the marketing king. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Like, if y'all not following him on Instagram, <laughs> y'all have to. So, I'm going to mm -hmm. bring this up and you just let us know what happened. So, you was just recently posted on The Shade Room. Mm-hmm. By a funny little joke you did at the <laughs> airport. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I knew that was going to be funny when I did it. Uh, I learned my marketing tactics from somebody else, uh, a mentor of mine, my marketing mentor. Uh, I really haven't tapped into him just yet, but I've been following him on like social media. I've just been learning from him off the content. He gave up social media social media and what he tell people on the social media for free. And mm -hmm. I actually bought a book of his, so it was like a, it was like a $30 e-book. It was like, uh, his name Neil Davis. Uh, Y'all can look him up on Instagram, but it's like, it was called Seven Steps to Grow Your Instagram and to Make It Into a Money Making Machine. That's what it was called. And I read it. Uh, and then he told, he told me a few things. He told people like, to do this, do this, do this. This is what helped me grow my Instagram. And this is what helped me start my marketing stuff. I followed his exact steps. The crazy thing is it started working. Like it started, my, I had like 8,000 followers on Instagram at first. When I first started all this, I had like 8,000 followers. Now I'm at like 30, 34,000 followers mm. using them tactics. Wow. And what's the name of this uh, book again? Uh, seven Steps to Grow Your Instagram into a Money Making Machine. Y'all heard that. Okay, seven look. Steps. Let me go uh, pre order. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Monetize your Instagram. <laughs> Have to. Mm -hmm. But Robbie, I know uh your your topics go ahead and bring oh, them in. Of course, of course. So I do just want to ask you real quick. I don't know if you tuned in or not this weekend, but you know Space Jam two came out. Yeah, I seen I seen mm -hmm. all the the commotion on internet about it. Uh, I have not watched it though. 
to be honest, I don't. You never watch it. I'm gonna try to watch it. I just haven't got to it. I don't watch TV no more. Uh, you have kids. You have. Don't you have? Um, I have a daughter. Yeah, but it's for the kids. <laughs> it is for the kids, but you know, Space Jam is like for everybody in a, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? But it's more. The, it's, it's for the kids, it's but you know, it's Space kids, Jam right? though. It's LeBron though. Like so, let's let's we watch basketball. You know. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like LeBron should have went ahead and did like his own type of legacy movie, quote unquote, or you feel like it was cool with him being LeBron and just go ahead and do like a Space Jam continuation? I think that was pretty cool, man. I think people over exaggerating about it not being like all oh, the old Space Jam. First of all, like you said, it's not for us adults, bro. It's not for us to be liking and trying to okay. be the best movie ever to us anyway. Right. So it's for the kids, man. I'm sure the kids are like it. Yes. Yeah. I loved it. It was bomb, okay? The movie mm. was good. It was two hours, but it was great. Ooh, okay. It was worth it. Zendaya was in there. Don Cheeley was in there. It was good. So it's check really good. it out, y'all. Check that out. Mm. See, I didn't see it yet, so that's definitely on my list. But all I heard, I heard a lot of adults talking about it. And like you said, it's definitely for the kids. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it definitely Everybody is. over exaggerating on social media about it though. Yeah. All the gr adult people, grown people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like when Space Jam came out back then, it was so raw. Like, we was like eight or nine. It wasn't raw back then either. We was just kids. It, it was raw though. <laughs> Look, he it was, like, um, I ain't gonna lie, Space Jam was cold. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kenny, you have so much going on. Let us know, do you have any, um, any lectures coming on, any events, anything coming up that we should know about? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, I got my first in-person conference that I'll be speaking at in Atlanta, um, August 7th. I just got invited on to this uh, big event. It's going to be like eight speakers. Uh, actually, it's going to be like six or seven millionaire, millionaire and multi-millionaire speakers. Uh, it's going to be on the stage with me as well. So that's going to be my first conference. I'm excited about that. That's huge. And um, I'm actually going to announce this soon. I ain't announced it yet, but I'm going to throw my own conference back back at home in Chicago yes, in September. Okay. So it's going to be like an entrepreneur, like networking event. Uh, I hey. might book like a, yeah, yeah, for fa fact. I might book like an artist or something on the back end to uh, have some fun after we get all the, talking about the money and, yeah. and talking about the uh, businesses and stuff like that. Look, so I'm going to set something up. Look, yeah. and you know they had a juice in there, okay? okay. We need to nah, be up in there. Nah, we, can, we, can set some, we can set something up for, for sure. For sure. Uh -huh. Thing, and that's I always say, you know, I always love to ask people, like, what are some things that we should bring to Chicago? You know, um, just speaking of artists, you know, a lot of artists always say they feel Chicago don't show love, but just coming from a, a, such a successful entrepreneur like yourself, what, that event is vital. You know, just meeting other entrepreneurs all throughout the city is something right. we need. Uh, I think that's that's why I did it. Um, I think we need more events to happen like that because I have been going to them type of events in other places, and the motivation I get out of that and the, the people around me that I'm seeing and my peers that's next to me doing it, coming with me and stuff, I see, I see a lot of motivation and people uh, actually taking action after that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like if we had more of those for people to attend, that'd be a somewhat of helpful. You know, yeah. if people were interested in actually, you know, going to do it. Yes, making these six or seven figures. Okay. Yeah. Right. Representation yeah. is important for real. Sometimes you got to see someone do it to feel like mm -hmm. you can do it too. Uh, that's what we need. That is what we need. Look, y'all, for those that's tuned in, we go post more about Kenny on our Instagram. So stay tuned with us. Can you let everybody know where they can keep up with you on all social media platforms? Uh, mainly all my stuff is Smitty the Goat. So it's uh, my Instagram handle is uh, underscore Smitty the Goat. S M I T T Y T H E G A G O A T underscore. Uh, Twitter too. Okay, Instagram and Twitter. Hold on, give us one more time. Right yeah, go ahead. We need one more. We got it now. We got it. Mm -hmm. But look, y'all, we're going on a quick, quick music break. We'll be right, right back. All right, y'all. So we just wrapped up with Juice Chicago Radio Station. My first radio interview. It was cool, man. It was kind of exciting. You know, I got to get better a little bit, of course. But, you know, we just wanted to tap in with the radio show, give them a little insight about me, you know, tell them what I got going on, tell them what I can help other areas, other people. Appreciate y'all for having me.